It is indeed a great honor to be here amongst all of you. This is actually my first visit to Bangalore and I have enjoyed it thoroughly. And uh, it's great to also meet the media of this wonderful district and area to highlight some key issues that really need to be highlighted. We heard what the Prime Minister said when he flagged off the two trains in Pune. And I think in light of that I want to say that it's very easy to talk about and give guarantees. You can give one, you can give five, you can give fifty. How does the Congress government here intend to fulfill those promises? And this is a very serious issue that has been brought to light and the Prime Minister just touched upon it. My friends, I want to just tell you about just one guarantee that the Karnataka, and the run up to Karnataka elections was made when Congress party promised to give 2,000 rupees per month to every house. And this was a very important scheme for them. It led to victory amongst other promises. Now let me tell you the latest that has happened. I'm sure all of you know that the finance department has already said that it would be very difficult to implement a scheme such as this. And the letter which is out in the public domain says that if implemented, it would result in substantial recurring liability in what, and would necessitate significant reductions in budgetary provisions across all departments and accounts. Additionally, it poses a risk of pushing the state towards a considerable revenue deficit. And therefore, it will end up violating the Karnatak Fiscal Responsibility Act. So while the finance department has in principle given the go-ahead and concurrence to the scheme following the instructions, let me tell you that after all the promises made that how it would help every woman, this is, it has been made very clear that the scheme would be extended exclusively to below poverty line families, significantly reducing the number of potential beneficiaries. So already those who dreamt of getting this added uh, boost to their income would now realize that unless and until they are part of the BPL families, they would not be given this. The letter has stated very categorically that it is not possible to provide such a large amount. So the number of beneficiaries is further reduced. Seven categories, categories will be excluded from the scheme. So if every woman was dreaming of getting this, there is some bad news. And this has been made very clear by Karnataka's own financial department, finance department. The department responsible for the expenditure. The categories that will be excluded from the scheme include income tax pays, women filing GST returns, professional tax pays, individuals with land holdings exceeding 5 acres of dry land and those with an annual income exceeding 1.2 lakhs. Owners of four-wheelers, government employees, pensioners and certain workers such as Anganwadi workers, ASHA workers, outsourced contract workers, guest teachers and Gram Grahaks. And additional six categories are to be excluded from the scheme. So the bad news continues. And the bad news has not come from the BJP. It has come from Karnataka's finance department. I think the contents of this letter should be made available because this is a huge blow to the game of promises that has become the top game today in the where the poll hustings go. And let me tell you the additional six categories which are to be excluded from the scheme are such as women whose husbands are income tax payers. So already if your husband is a income tax payer, the woman will not be given. 
So it won't be a broad brush of all women and 2000 rupees a month. Also families owning more than 10 acres of dry land. Women whose husbands are government employees. So not just the government employees, but also wives of those who are government employees. And or, or those husbands who file GST returns exceeding 40 lakhs per year. And women whose husbands are self-employed with an income surpassing 6 lakhs. So all women beneficiaries and the various social security pension schemes will be subsumed under this new scheme. Resulting in an annual saving of approximately 4,800 crores. So just imagine, the finance department has made it amply clear to the leadership of the state that the interested beneficiaries, which are now, and I think the number has decreased substanti substantially, will need to apply through the Seva Sindhu platform, providing the necessary documents and Aadhaar details to make sure there is transparency. And also in the case of multiple eligible women residing in the same household, only one woman will be eligible to receive financial aid under the scheme. So if there is one household, only one woman would be the beneficiary. So I think this is just the details of one guarantee. Can you imagine what would happen in the four others? So it's very easy to sell these lies and sell these dreams. But is the Congress government going to take responsibility of what it means for the people of Karnataka, for all the plans for development, for having some kind of fiscal responsibility and also to ensure that in terms of progress, in terms of infrastructure, roads and highways, but also crucial areas such as health and education, that this government indeed will be able to do justice. So that is a very important question that now the Congress government must answer. And I'm telling you just about one scheme and this is the response of the finance department. Can you imagine all others? Plus the growth and development which every citizen of, of Karnataka, every citizen deserves. Do you think it is possible with the state realizing that it is it's going to lead towards a huge debt crisis? We know what's happening in Punjab. The same ravery politics was talked about and what came out of it? What came out of it? You see what is happening in Punjab. It's easy to make promises, it's very difficult to deliver. Vada karna bada asan hai. Vade ko pura karna bada mushkil kaam hai. So, I would like also my wonderful colleagues and the state office bearers to express their opinion and tell us specifically how it impacts every citizen, every nagrik of the state these false promises and the impossibility of delivery. What was showed in the, this one, this is different from what, what was said during the campaign, but, but to see that they, they, they have taken a step forward to implement, maybe the, they have gone down to the fiscal responsibility and this one, but they have gone it with uh, fulfilling those promises. Free, uh, bus no, no, I, they, there is, like I said, impossibility of delivery, which means that it is financially and fiscally impossible to implement because the government just does not have the funds. What I mentioned just now is the huge promise given 2000 rupees per woman per household, and the result is that the finance department of Karnataka putting up at hands, saying no, not possible. This category is excluded, this category is excluded, this category is excluded, this category is excluded. Then what is left? That is what I'm saying. You are speaking about fiscal deficit. Last government has taken around 3 lakhs crores of loans. This government may also take, na? Possibly. No, the latest that I read was that this government is already 
blaming the former government for his fiscal crisis. So if they were aware of this fiscal crisis, why would they make such a huge promise? When they knew that the delivery of it is impossible. That means at the time of promise, they were aware of the situation. Madam, do you have any idea? AJP is not They have also given such kind of promise. Do you are aware of that? Yes, I was talking I was talking very specifically about one the, the letter given by the finance department. The uh, BJP is in power. In terms of every, whether it's the Ayushman Yojana, whether it's LPGs, whether it's toilets, whether in Madhya Pradesh a similar scheme is there. Ladli and Ladli Behen. The scheme has been implemented. And not just that, it is done carefully, it is done with some thought. There is also a budgetary allocation. So pre election SOP is different from a budgetary allocation based on the income and revenue of a state. It can't just happen in a vacuum. So you look at this is, this is we're talking about a prime minister of a country which, who has ensured that during COVID till now, 84 crores of Indians get free ration. It is ensured that there is increase in the tax and the tax collections. So that the government does not subsidize it, government gives this, but with great con uh, considerable planning. With this Kisan Saman Nidhi, the list is endless. I'm just talking about one particular. Madhya Pradesh, I know I answered you. I answered you. And then it becomes a responsibility of that. And I will be very fair here. If promises are made, they must be delivered. So, so when it comes to BJP stands, with all of India and all of Indians. Mere calling yourself INDIA will not make them Indians per se. If you look at where India is and what is in its economic interest and that the mandate of the government now is to make India and Bharat, that is India, to make it a developed nation as opposed to a developing nation. So, I think everybody knows the stature, how the stature of our country, how its progress, how its development, how its various infra projects, welfare schemes have impacted the lives of so many Indian households, the most marginalized sections of society. I can give a huge list, but that is, this is not the, I mean, I can tell you about the progress, uh, you know, that India has made. If you want, I can uh, go into it. But the fact of the matter is that uh, ra just ravery culture, will it help the country? It can help you win elections. But where does it lead you? Pre-election SOP or a promise is different from a budgetary allocation based on the revenues, tax collection and planned expenditure. There is a huge difference between the two. It is not opposed. So let me tell you, BJP is not opposing. Now this, this government is in power. But because it is very clear that the finance department of your state is saying that it is impossible. It is not up to BJP. BJP is just talking about the people and impossibility of delivery. So we are not opposing any scheme being offered. BJP central welfare schemes are the, have been the have impacted India the most. But uh, CM of this state, Karnataka state, he announced that this uh, scheme is model for whole nation. Well, if this is the model for the whole nation, then I, I, I let me tell you, it's a very scary scenario. And we don't, we hope this is not the model for the rest of India. It's a very scary prospect that if this is the model, unthinking, unplanned, expenditure on uh, to benefit a substantial number of uh, citizens without any research and understanding <coughs> it's a, it's, it, it is a, it is doomed for failure Did you feel 2000? I also wanted to if you can allow me to finish um, 
you said what does it mean for india somebody asked me a question you know just look at the progress of india i mean look at direct you know you talked about uh, uh, pre election so so bjp itself as a party has done the maximum for the poor of this country which is why it has always been coming to power and which is why we have a second uh, government consecutive time with a bigger majority and the largest vote share of india and indians let me make it clear in terms of dbt the transfer that used to take place uh, was of 61942 crores from 2014 to 15 2021 to 22 there's 7.16 lakh crores more in terms of national highways 2013 to 14 it was only 12 kilometers per day but 22 to 23 if you were to look at i'm just giving you comparative figures 2013 and 2022 50 kilometers per day look at the metro and construction of metro 2002 2014 20 kilometers every year 2014 to 2022 63 kilometers every year in terms of users of internet 2014 25 crores 2021 more than 83 crores daily transactions digital transactions 2014 66 lakhs daily transactions in 2022 28.4 crores of rupees this is where india is foreign investment in india 2006 to 14 289 billion dollars 2014 to 2022 554 billion dollars in terms of colleges all over india i don't have specific figures for karnataka but i will give them to you next time i'm here and i'll be here shortly 2013 to 14 36634 colleges 2019 to 20 the number changed in the matter of 5 years from 36634 to 42343 medical college can you imagine from the 1947 to 2013 we had 387 colleges close to more than 65 years but 2022 to 23 look at the progress that from 14 to 22 the number increased from 387 to 606 i mean look at i mean it's it's completely staggering and elevating to know that the progress has gone to such an extent something very basic and i i really hope to and this is this impacts me a lot and the socio economic indices let's look at the maternal mortality rate do you know what it was it was in 2014 it was 130 and it's come down to 97 just no no let me finish let me finish so in terms of something very basic like potable water 2014 was just 3 crores and the jal jeevan mission 2023 12 crores this is when all of you say and some of you say that it's the same schemes congress was doing the same thing but in terms of what it means and the beneficiaries now lpg connections before 2014 14.52 after 2014 31.36 crores beneficiaries i mean the number has doubled so imagine there's a progress done from 47 till 14 and that's a number of years and from 14 to 22 23 now because these figures are from 22 23 and 21 22 you realize that there's almost doubled nine years as opposed to so many more madam you you just mentioned the mmr rate yes in in a recent video <coughs> meeting uh, cm in, he did to put up that in particular particularly in dk district the rate is increased the rate of water is increased He took uh, he took the officials to task for he said during uh, earlier rule of uh, Congress this was far better 
that is extremely that is extremely unfortunate i was giving you the national figures so you know see facts tell you the story like you giving me a fact and it's important to know i was not seized of it i will study it and get back to you but what i'm saying is these are the national figures you are quoting to me a particular district obviously you have done a lot of research this particular district so then much more needs to be done and obviously there was there was something lacking here which has to be looked at i was telling you the commitment of the central government towards the progress of of every indian in this country and how they are absolutely record breaking statistics on growth and another thing is with respect to this lpg earlier the households are used to get subsidies <coughs> without announcing its subsidy is dropped now so many people are i'm you know i must be honest uh, on the local issues i will not, not be able not to talk no no i don't think it's a i don't think that is true i i don't think that is true the whole idea of lpgs do you remember what used to happen before the party before i think this idea you just asked that they are getting entitled to get subsidies now earlier they used to get no i think the subsidies are being subsidies are being given earlier earlier before 2014 I'm I'm not aware of it. But the subsidies, there's been an announcement that all subsidies will be stopped. Okay, uh, Can you show me the documentation on that? What what kind of documentation you require? Well, Please show it to me. I would be very happy to see it. Ah, yeah. No, since you know so much, so I'm sure you'll be able to substantiate it. No, I will. My colleagues will answer. Subsidies are all of them in the past. No. But just look at the scale of development. If you want to find, you know, nitpick. But just imagine, there is no comparison. Prime Minister Modi and any any other government. There is or anyone else. There is just no comparison for it. What it means for for Indians and Bharatiya, whichever state they might be. And this was why I was demonstrating to you the level at which progress has been done in the country. So you can say in this scheme it is not happened, in this district is not happened. Those five taps of water is not coming. I'm sure it's not perfect. I'm sure. But just imagine, imagine thinking of this idea in 2014 that why should everybody get it subsidized? We can give up our subsidy, middle class people, and give it to the very poor. <coughs> just that, just the very thought. So you can say, no thought is there and it has happened, but you know this has been done from this year and this district is not happening and I don't know. You can say anything, and there may there may be many factors, local, state. Private contractors. I don't know what the whatever the reasons are. Where the mismanagement can happen. But imagine the scheme and what it envisages and what it means for the people. You can keep nitpicking. You can keep nitpicking. But imagine that somebody thought of it. It was so basic. Why should it be subsidized for middle class people who can afford it? And so many Indians gave it up. All of us did. We were proud to do this for the country. Is that is not the point. Uh, he's talking about voluntarily. But stopping the subsidy to poor people is it? I don't think it has been stopped. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. You are saying still. You know, I don't want to pick fights with you. I I am not interested. If you want to to have a you have an issue personally with the party, I can take it up. But I think there is there is a chance. It's not about picking up any. No, but without any documentation. Without any documentation, show me. Where is the announcement? Where is the no? no? Where is the announcement? That is, that is, that is, that is what he is saying. Without is, any announcement, is, that is what I am saying. Well, let me let me be serious of the matter. कल तो यप्पत्ते ही दो वर्ष तक लगा स्वतंत्र तो नंतर भारत तक ये नहीं सीखे थे उम्बत्तो वर्ष तक नरेंद्र मोदी वाला संदर्भ तो ये नहीं सीखे थे थोड़ा तो अंकियम शब्द ना हाँ कि यप्पत्ते ही दो वर्ष तक लगे सीखा दिए दर्दु अदर किंतु ये रुप ग्यारंटी बदलाव 
ನಾವು ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿದ ಹಾಗೆ ಕೊಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ಮಾತ್ರ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೇಡಿಕೆ ನಾವು ಅದಕ್ಕೇನು ವಿರೋಧ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳೋದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ವಿಧಾನಸೌಧದೊಳಗಡೆ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಸೇಮ್ ಮೂವತ್ತೆಂಟು ಪೇಜ್ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿ ಅವರು ಎಂಟುನೂರ ಮೂರು ಯೋಜನೆಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕಳೆದ ಎಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಏನು ಎದೆ ತಟ್ಟಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಮತ್ತು ಕೇವಲ ಒಂಬತ್ತು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಎದೆ ತಟ್ಟಿಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನರೇಂದ್ರ ಮೋದಿಯವರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾವೇ ಎದೆ ತಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾನು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಮಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಇಡೀ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿಯಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ಗಳದ್ದು ನಾನು ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನನಗೆ ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಮತ್ತು ನೀವು ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡಿರ್ಬೋದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇಡೀ ಯೋಜನೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇಡೀ ಪ್ರಪಂಚದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಗ್ರಮಾನ್ಯವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇವರು ಹೇಳಿದಾಗೆ ಒಂದು ಐದು ಟ್ಯಾಪ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೀರು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ಆಗುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಕಾಣ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದರೆ ಈಗ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳು ಮಂಗಳೂರಿಗೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾತಾಡಿದಾಗ ಕೇಳಿದಾಗ ನೀವು ಹೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ನನಗೆ ಮುಂಚೆ ಒಂದು ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಾನು ಶಾಸಕನಾಗಿ ಬಂದಾಗ ಹನ್ನು ಹನ್ನೆರಡು ವೆಂಟಿಲೇಟರ್ ಈಗ ನೂರ ಅರವತ್ತು ವೆಂಟಿಲೇಟರ್ ನೂರ ಅರವತ್ತು ವೆಂಟಿಲೇಟರ್ ಬಂದಾಗ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ಲಿ ನೂರ ಅರವತ್ತು ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ಗಳು ಹದಿಮೂರು ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯಿಂದ ಬರುವಾಗ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ಲಿ ಡೆತ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಬರ್ತೇ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅಲ್ಲ ರೀ ಅದು ವೇದ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಒಂದು ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿ ಗೆಲ್ವ ಇನ್ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತೈದು ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೆಡ್ ನಾನು ಶಾಸಕನ ಮುಂಚೆ ಜೀರೋ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೆಡ್ ಇತ್ತು ಈಗ ಟೂ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಆ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಬೆಟ್ಟಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಅನ್ನು ರಕ್ಷಿಸುವಾಗ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ಲಿ ಸಮ್ ಹದಿಮೂರು ಹದಿನೆಂಟು ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯಿಂದ ಬರುವಾಗ ಆಗುವಂಥದ್ದೇ ಆದರೆ ನಾವು ಅಷ್ಟು ಜನರ ಜೀವವನ್ನು ರಕ್ಷಣೆ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಇಷ್ಟು ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಅನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಒಪ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಖಾಲಿ ಡೇ ಡೆತ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಅನ್ನು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ನೀವು ಅಧಿಕಾರಿಗಳನ್ನು ಕೇಳ್ತೀರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅದೇ ಅಧಿಕಾರಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ನಾಲ್ಕು ತಿಂಗಳಿರುವಾಗ ಆರು ತಿಂಗಳಿರುವಾಗ ಏನು ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ತರ್ತಾನೆ ಅವನು ಏನು ನೀವು ಒಂದು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೊಡುವಂಥ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ನಾನು ಹೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ರಾಜಕೀಯ ಬರಬೇಕು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅದೇ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ನ ಈ ಮೀಟಿಂಗನ್ನು ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ಅಂತ ಸರಿ ಅಂತ ಕಾಣ್ಬೋದು ನಾನು ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಉತ್ತರ ಇರಲಿಕ್ಕಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ವೆನ್ಲಾಕ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ಐವತ್ತು ಕೋಟಿಯ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾದಂಥ ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಕೆಲವು ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಇಲಾಖೆ ಕೊಡಿಯಪ್ಪ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕೆಲಸ ಅದು ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಸಿಟಿಯಿಂದ ನಾನು ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಟ್ರೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಇಲಾಖೆ ಏನು ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಇಲಾಖೆ ಕೊಡಬೇಕಾದಂಥ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕೊಡಬೇಕಿತ್ತು ಹೀಗೆ ತುಂಬ ವಿಚಾರಗಳಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಅವರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ದನ್ನು ಸರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದ ಸತ್ಯವನ್ನು ಮುಖ್ಯಮಂತ್ರಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬರು ಕೇಳಿ households subsequently the scheme was expanded and the target was revised to 8 crore lpg connections the target was achieved in september 2019 seven months ahead of the scheduled date so the headline is that ahead of the scheduled date the target of 8 crore lpgs was already been given to cover the remaining households under pmui ujjwala 2.0 was started on august 10 2021 on pan india basis to provide an additional 1 crore lpg connections based on a large number of applications government further extended the scheme with 60 lakh more connections under ajola 2.0 these facts are freely available you can uh, take a look at them last figure as on march 1st 2023 this year the total number of connections released under pmui is 9.59 crores so while one friend here is very upset about the fact and uh, pointing out that LPG yes, schemes, saying, let me finish, let me finish, LP, LPG schemes has, LPG schemes has been stopped, let me tell you, let me tell you that 9.5, can I finish, show some respect sir, I am speaking, don't speak in between, show some respect. He also asked the question, no, no, no that's, I am answering that question, I am answering, I am answering that question, let's, let's not be like this please, let's be pleasant. Let's show decency to each other, no? No, 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 no,